One of my absolute favorite reads from 2020 is Emma Isaac's brilliant book, Winging It. And today you get to meet the author and really one of my new favorite human beings ever. Emma is the founder and global CEO of Business Chicks. As a business owner by the age of 18, a property investor by 19, and self-made millionaire by 23, Emma has entrepreneurship and achievement in her DNA. Not only is she the author of the new book, Winging It, which if you do not have a copy, you are seriously going to want to get it, she's also the mother to six Yes, you heard that correctly. Six kids aged 11 and under, and she has helped raise over $13 million for various charities. Emma doesn't believe in work-life balance. She prefers to advocate for a full life where people are in constant evaluation of what they truly want from it. This episode is seriously packed with so much wisdom, as is her book. It was one of my favorite chats from the podcast this year, and I'm super excited for you to get to hear it. the podcast. I am already grinning from ear to ear, which (laughs) says it's going to be a fun conversation. Emma, thank you so, so much for being here. I'm so excited. It's so nice to be able to spend some time with you. So thanks for asking me on. I am so grateful that you were able to, because I have, I feel as though you've been riding in my passenger seat in my car for the last two weeks, as I've been listening (laughs) to the audio of your brilliant book, Winging It. I cannot even put into words just the wisdom that's packed into a book that doesn't actually look that thick, but truly there are so many just beautiful little nuggets of wisdom in this book. And as someone who, you know, has had a lot of experience not winging it, it's exactly the message that I think a lot of us women need. So I'm thrilled to have you here and cannot wait to dive in. And it's just so pretty too. I'm going to hold it up. Those (laughs) of you that are watching on video, I'm like, it just, it really is just such a great uh, decoration for any woman's office as well. It's so funny, isn't it? You know, I, um, we went back 400 times back and forth on the cover and the packaging and, um, you know, like when you are so in it and it's so convoluted, I think you've got the right product at the end of the day, but it's like, I don't even know what I decided. Like we just talked so much about it. Right. But it is, you're right. I mean, it's pretty inside, like all the, the hot pink and the, so thank you. That's really it kind is. of is. And I think that that is important too, as we're, you know, as we're diving in and working on ourselves, especially this year, there's been so much opportunity for growth. I, Mm -hmm. I really notice when, even when you hold something like this, you can just feel the intention in it, the intention that was put into it to inspire women, to be better, to go after their big ideas as we talk about all the time. Um, so I'm excited to, to dive into your story a little bit because it really is the inspiration for this beautiful book. And when you when you use the term winging it, I would love if you just start there. What does that actually mean to you? And then let's, let's roll that into like how your story started by doing exactly that. Yeah, 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 sure. So, I mean, I'm a career entrepreneur. That's what I call myself. I've never actually worked for anyone else before. I've never worked in an office that's not my own. I've never taken a paycheck apart from a little waitressing job I had while I was in, um, you know, school and through uni. But you know, when you live that sort of life, when you have to hustle like no one else, where you have to get creative and innovate and come up with the next idea, I mean, it really forces you into, yeah, I mean, creativity, you've got, you've got to get just so, um, you know, you just got to really find your way without having that experience. So when I sat down to write this book, the first two words that came to mind were like winging it. And that's what I wrote because it was the theme of my life up until the point of which I wrote it. So 
Um, yeah, I had my first company when I was 18 years old. I dropped out of uni, as I told you. I, I went to university for six months before realising that it was just too slow for me. Um, and much to my parents, they were, they were really disappointed. They're still disappointed to this day that I have <laughs> my degree. I mean, they're starting to forgive me a little bit more. But um, dropped out of uni, met someone out socially. She'd started a little staffing agency. I joined her in that business. Um, her and her business partner parted ways. And as he was walking out the door of that little company, he turned around and said to her, if you're going to offer equity to anyone in this company, you'd offer it to that kid sitting over there. And he pointed at me. Um, so that was kind of how I got my start. Like I obviously paid myself zero money. I um, put some savings into the business, um, but that's how I got my start at entrepreneurship. So I was in that first business for seven years. That was great. Before someone invited me along to a business chicks event and um, probably like a lot of you, a lot of your audience listening right now, Lindsay, like I was like, that's the worst company name in the entire world. <laughs> world I, I i'm not going to that like there's no way um and my friend said come on just it's amazing come and give it a try so i went i walked into that room i completely fell in love with it it was the most um spirited and energetic and just i don't know fired up kind of um culture if you like and i fell in love with the concept i went back to my recruitment company i made all my team members become members of business chicks i bought i think we bought three tables at the next event and at that event i heard the business was for sale so i was 25 um i ended up buying the business and um it got, got to work six months later. We started with 200 uh, members. We now reach over 500,000 women. Um, and it's been 15 years of just honestly like blood, sweat and tears. And it's, it's, I, I am as excited about it as I was, you know, when I, when I started, but listen, um, the main way we make revenues is through um, events, obviously not a great business to be in this year, um, pre-pandemic, we were producing about 110 live events with people like Sir Richard Branson, Diane von Furstenberg, uh, Liz Gilbert, Seth Godin, Brene Brown, Ariana Huffington, um, yeah. you name them, we probably worked alongside them. So yeah, getting back to the book, I mean, I feel that the experience of working alongside these incredibly successful entrepreneurs and business visionaries for the past 15 years, plus, um, you know, consulting with tens of thousands of women amidst the business chicks community puts me in a really um, unique position of knowing what holds people back and what propels them forward. So yeah, that's what I've tried to do with the book. I've tried to, you know, summarize my life philosophies of just going for it without having a clue of what I'm doing, you know, without having, any experience or any knowledge or any money or any education, you know, and it's really been a theme I've seen not only with my life story, but with our members and all these amazingly successful people that I've been able to, to hang out with. <laughs> and we do have to pause and acknowledge 15 years and you just celebrated that yeah, milestone, correct? Right, this month. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's such an accomplishment. And I think what's cool about that when I thought about your timeline is I was actually inspired to become an entrepreneur during in the US, we had a big recession in 2008. And I, you know, that, that catapulted me into this area that I had no clue, no business being in, but to see that you not only got to support women, obviously you started in Australia, but you got to support women probably through that wave and into now, you know, this new challenging season. And I think community, what you're providing, the community, the mentorship, the education is, is so vital. How, how have you seen that really come alongside and support women in their journeys? How big a part has community been? It's a great question. And the answer is huge. It's been a huge, yeah. huge factor in uh, surviving this year. And, you know, I have a CEO in my business and we're obviously very close and we work um, together every single day. And one of the first things we did after we called the emergency meeting, after we, you know, put all our hairs, <laughs> they're all on fire and we put them out. Right, um, put that fire out. Yeah. After that, you know, we just, we had a moment and I sat with her and I said, who do we want to be known as or mm. what we want to be known for when this is all said and done who how are we going to show up how are we going to set up how are we going to provide how are we going to support and you know one of the biggest decisions we made was to really dial up um the support to our members so we started running a bunch of virtual meetups every single week where we literally hold space for all these women and you know go around the zoom and say okay well can you help her and can we help each other and what you know what do you need and really showing up like they were free. We made no money from it. But again, you know, when this is all said and done, these our members will remember, hey, Business Chicks was there for me. So we did that. We obviously pivoted all our offline events into 
digital events, which are like 10% the amount of fun <laughs> that was mandatory. And we're making no money from them whatsoever. Like it's embarrassing how little money we are making. Um, but you know what? Like being in business for 15 years, we obviously have a depth of um, not only experience, but we have a depth of engagement with our membership. Um, these people have had, you know, multiple years of engagement with us doing different um, conferences and tours and, and different things. So they really showed up for us in the same way we showed up for them. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, we're, we're a good, strong business. We have a good infrastructure behind us. Um, I wouldn't say we were sort of recession ready or, um, you know, pandemic ready, but we certainly over the last 15 years have got a really, really, really solid business. We have um, very much diversified our revenue streams. Um, you know, we, we're a sound, you know, we've managed our cash really, really well. Um, we have really amazing financial people who had buffers, you know, all, all of these sort of business disciplines that come only when you have been in the game of the one company for 15 years. So, you know, even though I can laugh and say we're making no money now, you know, we certainly, um, you know, we are, we are showing up for our community. They will remember that at the end of the day. And, you know, we are we are here for the long term. But, yeah, it's funny when you say, like, it's such an accomplishment. I, you know, people have said to me over the last couple of weeks, and I I, I can hear it, but to me it's um it it, it is it genuinely has flown yeah. um and you know i'm i'm not surprised by it you know I, I think what we do is really really special and i think when you're a brand that does innovate and reinvent all the time then you are going to be rewarded with um you know 15 amazing years or 20 amazing years or 30 amazing years and that that really comes back to how much of the founders' DNA is in the brand, how much, um, you know, are they still involved or have a say in. And I, I hope to think that I'm, you know, um, a part of that success because I am the one who always agitates for change and I'm always going to say, we can do better and we should be doing this and should we do that? And, you know, so I'm like the annoying one. Um, but, you know, I mean, the team love me, but they also get annoyed by me. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> like any good, any good visionary. I mean, truly. Oh, that's yeah, beautiful. I, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. You know, I'm, I'm um, in the throes of writing my second book right now. And that's just been an absolute joy as well. Um, yeah. And just really a study into so many things. But one of the chapters is around, you know, the future of work and the way we're going to work. And, and another chapter was about, um, you know, protecting the mavericks in our businesses, because mavericks are these really tricky people to work with um, that have all these ideas and, and they will stop at nothing to get their own way. And, you know, they're inspiring to be around, but they can also be challenging. And, you know, one of the pieces of advice in that book I've said is like protect the Mavericks. Like we need the Mavericks in our companies if we are to continue to do amazing things, you know, like without Mavericks, it's just quite like vanilla and um, beige. So, yeah. Oh, well, I cannot wait to get my hands on that book too. It's, you know, it has been so much fun. Um, reading different parts of your journey. And I, I want to take you back to the story you tell about that conversation where the partner was exiting the business and turned and looked at you and said, if you're going to give equity to anyone, give it to that kid. Because yeah. what you so beautifully created, I, I think speaks to where a lot of people in our audience find themselves right now, where they feel like they're waiting, they're waiting for their big break. They're waiting for their shot. They're um, in a position maybe to start doing some of the things that you did. And I'm going to have you share about that yeah. to set themselves up for that moment where they get their big break, right? Whether it's in their own yeah. business or in another business, will you talk right. a little bit about what was it within you yeah. that you found that resolve to say, okay, I'm here's how I'm going to show up in this space. And did you expect it to turn into what mm. it did? Yeah, it's a great question. It's a big question. And I think the, the two things that came out of that question for me is number one, I was not waiting. So I, I don't wait for anything. You know, I, I, don't believe in waiting. Um, you know, I, I try and move forward to everything. And I know that there, there was no opportunity there, so it's not going to move forward to. But, you know, the whole idea of um, I would never sort of sit around and wait for something passively to come to me, right? The other thing is the expectation piece of your beautiful question. Um, I never had an expectation of that. And I think when you lose expectations and you lose your attachment to a certain outcome, that's perhaps where the waiting, you know, is able to be halted because something happens um so i mean i was 18 i was a kid um and i knew nothing about business nothing at all but i knew that 
you know, you needed to be really enthusiastic to get ahead in life. You needed to be curious. You needed to be invaluable. You needed to be useful. Um, and so there were some of the things that I tried to do when I w- walked into that first business. So I was the, the dork that would walk around and change everyone's trash cans. And if you got some fresh water, do you need some fresh coffee? And I, you know, like I tell the story, I think in the book, like the color of our business cards didn't match the color of the paint on the wall. So I got my dad in one weekend to paint the office. <laughs> like I didn't even, I didn't even ask for permission with that. I just got him to do it. You know, I didn't even think that that was the thing you had to ask for. Um, you know, we all answer the phone in different ways. So I made sure I made, wrote a little manual for doing that. Like I'd clean every surface to make sure everything worked. Mm-hmm. I rearranged the reception area. Like I just did whatever it took. I was the first person in that office at 7 a.m. every single day and the last to leave after 7 p.m. every single day. So I think that enthusiasm is um, a quality that really can get you so many places, you know, and it's, again, not, not being about being annoying, but it's about showing up to every situation, mm-hmm. trying to have a smile on your face, trying to be optimistic, trying to nod and say, yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm here to serve, I'm here to work and I'm here to serve and, and mm-hmm. use me as you will, right? So I just, um, I don't know where that came from. Like I'd like to think, I think I'm sure my mum and dad would like to tell you that they had a lot to do with it. Um, but I just had it in me that I knew my job of being here. And I still believe that to this day is to serve people, right? And I think we look at leadership as a skill and we get it wrong in terms of the best leaders are those who look at their people and, and are constantly walking around and saying, how can I support you right now? What do you need right now? How can I serve you? What, what, what's frustrating you? What can I do for you? You know, and most yeah. people think that, you know, that's an employee's job to that for their manager. So yeah, I just, I, I think enthusiasm was the number one thing. I think curiosity was a really, really big thing. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was back then. I don't think I even knew how to spell the word entrepreneur when I was 18. And and I certainly had no role models for what an entrepreneur was. Um, So it wasn't like I was sitting there thinking, I hope one day this is going to happen to me. And, you know, therefore I will become this, nothing like that. It just, um, I just showed up and tried to give the best version of myself. And then opportunities came along, including that one and and hundreds more, because I think, you know, when, when you, when you, Put yourself out like that and when you try and um stand out from the crowd or when you differentiate yourself you know and and you, you do show that positivity like people remember that and they respect it and they want to help you in the way that you want to help them so that was some of the things i did it it really was so telling it was one of my favorite stories in the book because i think it speaks a lot to how you're wired and what has now created this environment that the next venture you went into buying business chicks was such a success and Let's talk a little bit about winging it when you first bought that business, because had you ever hosted an event before? Did you have any experience? (laughs) I love that. I love, I mean, every part of it, I have, I have just giggled at so many parts where I, I (laughs) see myself in, in situations where, and maybe it was a situation where I didn't wing it, where I was waiting to be ready or waiting to have that plan. So um, talk a little bit about those early days. What did winging it look like in starting? Well, as you took ownership over business chicks and then growing it to where it is today. Yeah. So I'm someone, and I think you might've read this part in the book, but I'm obsessed with strengths, right? I just, um, I, I, I know all the five top strengths of my people. I know our strengths map. I know when um, we have too many relators in the business, that's a really bad place to be or too many, like I, I, I just obsess obsessed with strengths. So one of my top five is maximizer. And what that means is I like to take something good and turn it into something really great. So I did that with a little staffing agency. I turned it into something really fantastic. And I knew when I heard that business chicks was for sale, I was like, I could make this a lot bigger and better and, and, and greater and that we certainly did. Um, yeah, no experience, no experience. And added to that, the recruitment company was doing really, really well. Like we were very profitable every single year. Um, you know, I had a, I had built myself into a great lifestyle. I was able to invest in properties every single year. I, you know, it was, it was working, right? It was, there was nothing broken about the situation I was in. Um, but I just felt, and I think that's a really um, useful word for all of us to really come back to how things feel. I just felt something different and something exciting. And it's like I say to people, like, you know, everything kind of tingled and, you know, I felt at a cellular level I had to explore this, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, no experience, um, never run an event before, no clue how to run a membership organisation, but felt something when I had that conversation. Um what was interesting after that was that, um, you know, I started to think maybe I didn't make the right decision. So I started to talk to my parents and they're like, why would you do that? Why would you do another business when you've got a perfectly good one? You know, and then I spoke to my accountant and he's like, there's no business to, it's not a business, you know, like it's a little event, it's not a business. And then um, I ended up hiring a management consultant to come and have a look at the books and 
do some due diligence for me. And he's like, this, this is not a business, right? So once I started to get in my head and overthink and overanalyze, I started to talk myself out of this, you know, this deal. And then, I mean, I don't exactly know what happened, but I still had that kind of funny tummy feeling of, no, there's, mm-hmm. there's something here. Yeah, this, I can, I, I, I can do this. So I ended up going ahead with the deal and, you know, the rest is kind of history. But I, I think, I think there's some wisdom in, in that for a lot of people, you know, I think we walk through life a lot of the time being so, um, you know, so up here and sort of dropping down and going, hang on a minute, like, let me just check in here and let me see what the, I don't know what it is, what the, what the body says, what the gods say, what, like, what does it, what does it feel like, you know? And that's not to say that it's always going to be perfect. It's always going to w- work out, right? That's not at all. But, you know, in that imperfection of, you know, saying yes to your gut and figuring it out, um, you know, there's, there's, there's beautiful lessons to be learned there as well. So I, you know, I'm always going to be a proponent of, yeah, just feeling feeling into decisions and trying to to lead with that gut and trying to be instinctive and um that's certainly what I did with business chicks and um yeah so yeah. far so good <laughs> yeah well right yeah I think it I think it's working out okay and I love as you've shared I can I can really just fear feel the love that you have for the women in your community um by the way that you've showed up this year mm-hmm. so as you have navigated and, and really seen the, just the things that your community needs this year, what, what do you feel like as we, uh, so this women will hear this interview, we're a couple of weeks from this, the end of 2020, which a lot of people have been looking forward to. And yet I don't know that 2021 will feel all that different. I think the clock will tick over and we'll, mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll probably feel a, a little bit like we do now, but yeah. what do you feel like will be the the make or break those who do what in 2021 will be you know be telling a different story at the end of the year what do you see really determines how the next year especially in all this uncertainty and just everything that we're faced with how, what what do you think those if you you could even give we'll give you 3 3 to 5 but what yeah. are, what are those traits or those things that we can be developing in ourselves that you've experienced either in your own business journey or you've seen other women like what has people in a time like this come out ahead yeah yeah it's a big question it's a great question and i think you know i'm i'm as you were talking i was thinking about a few people um sort of calling them in and the people who have done really really well are those who have been vulnerable in this time um Mm -hmm. that have asked for help that have been able to cultivate a level of resilience who have really and it's so so generic to say this, but they have worked on their mindset and tried to show up with an optimism and a positivity because that's what our people want from us. They want to look at us and, and, and feel like everything is going to be okay, right? And that's not to say that any leader has the answers or knows how 2021 is going to go, but I think this idea of being radically optimistic, trying to be positive in every situation, trying to find the silver lining in every single situation, um, but being astute at the same time, you know, like it's not about... Um, you know, putting rose colored glasses on and saying, it's all going to be fine because right, it's not right. all going to be fine. Right. <laughs> but it's about, it's, it's, you know, getting into, like I said before, immediate and urgent action and trying to fortify ourselves for if this thing goes on for, you know, another year or for, for six months or for 18 months, like none of us really know. Right. But I think that vulnerability, that ability to ask for help, the resilience, um, you know, very much continuing to build circles and building relationships is a huge part of what I see people doing at the moment, you know, and, um, you know, the community builders have been really, really good at doing that. And um, the people who have survived this time are the ones who have been willing enough to ask for that help. So I think there's a few things. Um, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's been such a confusing time for so many people hey and I, and I get it's like being on a roller coaster and people like just gripping on and and, and trying to trying to survive um but yeah the ones who I think are going to do the best are obviously the most resilient ones but also the the givers the people who have given 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 and been kind in this time um you know I've got to believe in some sort of karmic <laughs> um yeah value there but yeah I don't know what do you what do you think what do yeah. you think you know? I love that. Oh, well, I, so what I love what you were talking about in giving, I think this is a, is an opportunity to, to be about what we say we're about. Right. Right. So in communities like business chicks, powerhouse women to not just use the hashtag women supporting women, like how are we actively showing up and doing that? Mm -hmm. And 
uh, something I've been having a conversation with some business leaders in our community and people that I mentor is just this, uh, you know, really when things are so chaotic, people need, they want certainty. And there's yeah. always something that we can provide certainty around, even if yeah. it's just that, you know, Hey, we're going to be here for you. That's the one thing right. you can count on is that we're going to be here. So yeah. I've really challenged myself to think about that. Where can I provide a little bit of certainty in an uncertain yeah. world? And yeah. there's usually something, almost always yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. And I get that from you too. Yeah, I love that. I think, you know, your first part of the question was, you know, what do people need? I think they need reassurance. And yeah. I think we're all just in a big hug, which we can't give all of this. Amen. Right <laughs> I'm going to hug so many people when I'm allowed. I know, same. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, that, it's that certainty and reassurance, I think. Um, yeah. you know, that even if it's not okay, it's still going to be okay. Um, and it's not at all to minimize any hardship and suffering in the world. It's been such a shitty year from obviously a health perspective, yeah. but you know, really, um, no matter what we're dealt, um, you know, we can get through it if we support one another and be kind. Um, yeah. And I love that trying to provide some reassurance and certainty. That's nice. (laughs) I love what you said too, about relationships and because the world is not totally at a standstill, but we find people, maybe people we want to connect with, with the ability or maybe more time on their hands to connect. And you share so many beautiful, tangible tips in the book about building and cultivating those relationships. You've shared some of the incredible speakers you've had on your stage. What is, what's the best way that we can be using this time, um, Mm -hmm. to build key relationships that we really want to cultivate, whether it be for business or, or for personal, you know, reasons. But I think this, this time has a lot of potential for deepening relationships that really matter. So yeah. What are some of your best tips for right now? Absolutely. I mean, I think the thing with any beautiful relationship, obviously it's about establishing trust and credibility and whilst we all it's very very human for us to want to rush that um and you know get married before we start dating but really just having an understanding that relationships do take time to develop that trust and that credibility and I can only call upon some of my lived experiences you know from trying to get Seth Godin to speak for us I think I must have asked him like 15 times and it took eight or nine years to get him to speak for us you know Richard Branson, who's a um, beautiful friend and personal mentor of mine, you know, I've known him for 12 years now and that relationship wasn't earned like in a flash, you know, and, and there's a couple of hacks that I, I, you know, employ, if you like, um, you know, I'm, I'm really great at sending holiday cards. I'm really good at um, remembering people's, but well, I don't remember them, but I have a system for, you know, um, when people's birthdays are. Um, so I'm, I make sure I show up at the right time, you know, um, yeah. And also I'm, I'm really, really into just this sort of spontaneous um, kindness, if you like, or, um, you know, I'll often just start an email saying, hey, Lindsay, you know, just checking in, just want to see how you are, you just, how you are, you just popped into my mind and I'm thinking of you, love Emma, done, you know, and I don't want yeah. anything, there's no ask, but it's, um, that's been a really beautiful way for me to build relationships over time. Um, yeah. And, you know, we got, we go into it a lot in the book in terms of, you know, how you can do that. Um, you know, all those little hacks are great. Um, but I think it's about, yeah, showing, showing that you're in it for the long haul, building your yeah. trust, building your credibility, little things though, you know, um, uh, I, like my, my five-year-old, he's got a kindergarten teacher. And when I met her for the first time, um, she, t- she asked me about business checks and I told her, and she's like, oh, I've got a little side hustle. And I said, tell me about it. And then I went and bought a couple of her products that night because like I wanted to support her. Right. And I didn't do it because I want, you know, her to give my son good, <laughs> mind you, I couldn't give no, <laughs> couldn't care less, but um, you know, like it's just a nice thing to do for someone. Right. And it made, it made her feel seen. It made her feel like I had listened to her. Um, it, it, you know, it just strengthened the relationship and we had to, that to go on from. So I think, you know, trying to find little things like that, like we had a meetup for business chicks members in California the other day, and that was really nice. And one of the, Woman on there has a candle business. So, you know, I bought one of her candles, like she had one for um, something about poetry, and I bought one of those for one of my friends who's a poet. Like, just little things. Like, it's, yeah. it doesn't take much to make people's days. Like, and it doesn't cost much. You know, I think a lot of people think, oh, I can't afford it. I don't have the time. You know, I'm, I, you know, I'm someone who's built my career through investing in relationships. And that's what's important to me. It might not be important, um, you know, to you, but I'd hazard a guess that a lot of people's success, you know, rests on the fact and the strength of their relationships. And it really, um, it really 
was highlighted to us when the pandemic hit because, you know, we had to take all our events online and, you know, our revenue was smashed by over 80%. And so we weren't able to pay the fees that we were able to pay, you know, pre-pandemic. And we had to call in a bunch of favours, you know, and I think I asked like at least 20 people to speak, you know, at our digital events um, at, at no fee. And they all said, absolutely am. Like you've showed up for me, you know, 20 times in my career and supported me absolutely like it's the least I can do. So I think... Yeah that investment in people, that investment in relationships, you know, it, it comes back to you um, in other ways. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's one of my, it's one of my jams. I love it. I love that. And that was probably why it was one of my favorite parts of the book too, because that that's, I think giving gifts is more my love language than receiving them. Yeah. <laughs> when, when we fun. talk about the love languages, um, yeah, finding yeah, that agree. perfect little, little token or little touch, um, it, and it really does. I think it comes down to what I really got from what you shared is being intentional and in whatever way is authentic for you, being intentional, showing you're listening, showing you care. And sometimes yeah. it's just that text saying, Hey, I was thinking of you. Yeah. Um, I love that. So, okay. As you look ahead, yeah. you know, business chicks just turned 15, which mm-hmm. there's so much more to go. What do you see? What do you see for if you have a vision out for the next 15 years, mm. whatever your you sense is really next for this beautiful community that you've cultivated? Um, I would love to hear. Do you have a vision that looks out that far? Yeah. You know, it's funny. Like um, I didn't have a vision. I knew I wanted to make something extraordinary and create something um amazing that had an incredible impact on a lot of people right so I feel like we can tick that box um yeah and the vision conversations are really hard one to have you know and I know like my CEO always is at me like what's the vision what's the vision, <laughs> <laughs> vision? like write it down and I'm like you know what the vision is it's more of the same mm. it's more of the same we want to continue to support women into greatness in whatever ways that we can deliver that right and I can only look back in order to um you know a crystal ball into a vision or into a future. I can only look at what has you know happened in the past, and that is yeah. us innovating every single year and coming up with new products and new ideas, and and listening so much and, and and hearing and you know taking that all in and just trying to meet people at where they're at. Right. So, you know, people say to me like, "How many members do you want to get to?" I say, "I don't really care." Like I, for me, it's not about that. You know, I mean, I yeah. can have a billion members, but if I'm impacting like a handful in, in a really large way, then that is more meaningful for me. So, you know, I really feel like it's going to be just um, a lot more of the same. I mean, we really feel that we do have a global offering. So I'd like to reach a lot more women around the world. I mean, we've done some phenomenal work. We've raised over $13 million for different nonprofits. I'm really, really, really proud of that. But, you know, in celebrating the 15 years, I've, um, you know, people have been writing to me and people that I don't know, you know, members that have been members for a decade or so and telling me their their stories and sharing their memories. And it's just phenomenal to to see that what you kind of create and you don't know you're doing it, but it does really have that ripple yeah. effect, you know. And um, so I, I, the vision is more of the same, you know, reach, reach the people who need to hear it, the people who need to be held, the pe- people who need encouragement and need to be inspired. You know, that's what I want to be able to do. Um yeah. yeah, I mean, I think my future includes no more children. <laughs> I think I should stop it. I think I should probably stop at the six. It's um, a good even number. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's nice to sort of say half a dozen. Maybe I should just hang, hang up my boots there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, 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 I truly do, um, you know, believe some of my success is owed to being so here and so in the now and so present, whether that be present with people or present with a project or present with my children, whatever. Like, so I know my life is going to be huge and I'm, um, and I have a great vision for how that's going to be. I want to be a fantastic grandma. Like I, please God, like I, you know, that's a long way in the future. (laughs) My my oldest is 11, but you know, like I have a vision for how I see myself, but I, I also try and just really, really be here and now and you know I know it sounds a bit woo-woo and idealistic no. but, but try and be here like we don't have yeah. more you know like it's mm. yeah so I, I I do just try and try and be here as much as possible it's actually really encouraging to hear it's one of the toughest questions when someone will ask about the the bigger vision but I, I truly can't see beyond the next maybe couple of months and you talked about this in the book too I think that is one of the things that can get in our way of winging it or just really going for something is but I had this plan and 2020 is like such a beautiful reminder that we can have the most perfectly laid out plan and then 
there might be a pivot. There might be a, a plot twist, if you will. So yes. uh, how important is it to just hold those plans with very a very open hand or, <laughs> or like you so beautifully said, just be in the now, have a plan, but be in the now and be, be present to, to what's changing around you? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I mean, I, I really, instead of me being led by plans so much, I, I'm, I'm led by other things, right? So I'm, I'm led by needs of other people. So I, I look at that, study that, then try and come up with something to, to serve that. But also our, our core values. Like I, I know people like roll their eyes, but I'm, I'm very much led by our values and try and make decisions against our values and how that feels right. So, you know, I've got an interesting relationship with planning. Um, you know, 20 years ago when I started my companies, you could kind of say, here's my five-year plan. That's what we're going to do. And you can kind of tick, tick off the box every quarter or every, you know, six months. Nowadays, I just feel that business is so fast and, you know, everything is fast. Like the way we live is fast. Technology is fast. You know, our yeah. kids grow up fast, all that sort of stuff. So I just, you know, for us, our planning is in um, three months sprints and that's sort of how far out I mean we you know I know we have events booked for November 2021 we have events booked for July 2021 all that sort of stuff yes it's happening in the background but I um you know I like to shorten the planning cycle and just be able to be here and and sprint to the next goal and then reset that goal right so that's been that's been part of our kind of um rigor or discipline if if yeah if you will um but yeah I don't know it's um I don't know. I don't That's know. encouraging. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a lot of my friends obviously shared their plans with me for this year, and and you know, actually, I had this girlfriend who was speaking in February, I think it was, and and she's like, oh, I went, away, I just went away for the weekend, just passed, and I spent like forty eight hours planning every single where I'm going, every single weekend, every single book I'm reading, every single <laughs> client. Like she had it mapped out, like to the like. Oh wow! You have no detail. You have no idea of the detail. And then two, like, it was like two or three weeks later, you know, the pandemic was announced as a pandemic. And I called her, I'm like, Nick, how's, how's, how's your 2020 plan going? She's like, listen, I've just got a marker. I've got a Sharpie and I've crossed out the zero. I've put a one and we'll revisit. And even that's not going to happen. Right. So I don't know. It's, um, I don't know. I, I, yeah. I, I'd like to think that my, mm. my theory will be challenged, but I, I think we can't look too far into the future. I really, mm. I really think there's a, there's a magic to being here and, and working in shorter, in shorter sprints. Yeah. I, I was in a shop today and they had a sign that said like one of those letterboard signs that said the worst investment I made was a 2020 planner. I thought that was so I, cute. Yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, could definitely feel that one in my soul. That's why yeah, I don't buy the paper plan. The refunds, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned about your beautiful family, six kids. The youngest is a, a pretty young, right? A yeah, few months old. Five months. He's five yeah. months. Oh. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure you get a lot of questions about what that looks like being, you know, balancing the, and I don't even love that word balance, but, you know, juggling whatever word we want to use, uh, family and business. Yeah. So you know, how has that looked for you? As you, you mentioned your oldest is 11, youngest is five months. How yeah. has that looked as you've scaled this company and then been able to, you know, bring these beautiful humans into the world? I'd love to hear your, I'm not a mom yet. So I would love to hear just your wisdom on that and what you've learned. Cause I'm sure it's a constant learning process. It is. I mean, every day it's a, it's a challenge and it's chaos and it's everything you'd imagine it to be with. Um, yeah. My six kiddos. Um, I mean, I think what's a bit unique about me is that I started my career super young, right? So I started 18 um, and had already got myself into a situation of a bit more financial independence um, by the time the kiddos came around. And I'd also learned like a bunch of skills about what it takes to manage your time really, really well, how to delegate really, really well, how to focus on the stuff that matters, how to let the other, you know, tasks kind of pale in the background. So, um, you know, that doesn't, that, that's not to say it's not easy. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard, you know, parenting is, is really hard. Um, I think I try and have bring across a couple of my philosophies from business in that, you know, I work on my mindset every single day. I try and choose to be happy. Like it's not as if I'm born with all this amazing energy. Like I yeah. kind of, I work on that. Um, you know, we, we have amazing systems in the house. We have amazing helpers. We've got a couple of babysitters who are like my wives and we work as a team. And, you know, now that the kiddos are a little bit older, they also help. I'm always like saying to the 11-year-old, the go and change his diaper and 
put him in the bath and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, so we, we do kind of work as a team. Um, but that's not to say I'm not, you know, regularly rocking in the corner or, you know, trying to hide them in the closet. And, and this year has been hard, like virtual schooling, um, you know, the school age ones has been a real challenge for it. Hats off to anyone or your audience out there who's doing it. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, friends of mine come over to our house and they say, this is more calm than houses with two kids, you know. So I think it does start with the, you know, your sort of mindset and the tone you put out. Like I'm, I'm never, like I'm not going for perfectionism, so I'm not constantly, oh, put that away. Oh, like it's cool. Like the kids is a moment in time. You know, I just, I just kind of, I'm very, very calm and I can somehow operate in the chaos and I let things go and I don't need yeah. to control everything. And, you know, it's, and, they're they're just funny little humans they're just so hilarious you know and i i um whilst they're totally exhausting i also get energy from their little ideas and and yeah they're crazy they're totally <laughs> they're totally nuts are there any of the bunch that you see future entrepreneurship yet yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think so i think um the second one her name's honey h-o-n-e-y honey um she's nine I actually, um, she's a crack up. She's the funniest kid you'll ever meet. You know, I, <laughs> I had a parent teacher conference with her teacher on Zoom the other day. And afterwards I said, hun, he just loves having you in, in the class. Like he just, he said, you're a really great kid. He just loves having you. And she goes, I know, I totally bring the vibe to that class. <laughs> she did not. I she love her know. already. She's so confident. Like if you could have half the confidence of a honey Isaac, you would be doing really well. She's just like, yeah, I know. I bring the vibe and you say, you look cute today. I know you're not meant to say that to a little girl, but you know, you'd say it every now and then you look cute today. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I know. So she, yeah, she's that. And she always tells everyone she's going to take over mommy's company one day. So I think maybe, maybe she's going to be, but who knows? I, again, I can care less. I just yeah. want them to be yeah. kind humans and, um, you know, be truly inclusive and loving. And that's all I need. Yeah. Oh, that's, I, well, I cannot wait to see honey take over the world (laughs) in whatever way she does. That's so cute. Okay. So, um, I, I want to ask just a couple of like totally random fun questions. Yeah, I know you've been, good. you've been on so many interviews and podcasts recently promoting the book. You are just such a light. Um, this has truly just been mm-hmm. one of my favorite conversations that I've gotten to have recently. And, you know, uh, it's, that's one of the most fun things about having platforms and, and companies like ours is the opportunity to connect and really get to come into someone's world and see what they're creating. So mm-hmm. I'd love to know what for you right now in this season is just really fun. What's like what's something that's fun for you right now? <laughs> um, okay. I, I'm one of these people that always tries to, um, have something my future to look forward to. Right. So, um, we're recording this now, um, at holidays, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. Um, so next week we are going to stop working. We um, are going to get in an RV and we're going to travel across America. So that's something that, um, wow. you know, we're spending a lot of time thinking about. And, yeah, it's going to be super fun. I hope it's going to be fun. <laughs> nice. um, yeah. So that and my little guy who's five months old is just so fun. So every time, you know, someone gets him up from the crib and brings him to me, it's just joy um, as most little new things are. And, you know, just writing, um, obviously connecting with people um, and lots of eating. I think like um, it's, yeah, I've just enjoyed, it's been really weird to be home so much, you know, and I've really enjoyed Mm -hmm. being home, you know, it's been just such a lovely time to be able to cook with the family and spend time together. And um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Cancerian. So I love that sort of um, idea of being home. So yeah. Uh, What about you? What's fun to you? What, What are you into? Oh, my, so my newest obsession is my husband and I just bought our first investment property. It's a little A-frame cabin in the woods. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. So it's just North of me. So if you drive through Flagstaff, Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, you'll have to let us know. And you guys can go and have some fun at the the cabin. It's It's the cutest thing you've ever seen. I have just started a Pinterest board for myself because I went to the woods <laughs> last week. Um, I live in LA, as you know, so I went to Big Bear last week and just rented a cabin and like obviously fell, over, fell head over heels in love with that idea. So now I've got like all these cabin yes. interiors. Yeah, right. We need to share boards. Oh, that's so I fun. have one too. So we'll, yeah, we'll have to compare cabin notes. Well and done. Well yeah, done. It's, 
It is. And I think that's one of the lessons of this year is just, you know, I didn't actually miss the travel. I didn't miss mm -hmm. traveling a, a bunch. I had a lot of speaking engagements, a lot of um, things that would have taken me out of just my normal, you know, routine and yeah. having that space. Now my husband and I are celebrating 10 years of marriage. So we think it, it's like our, our 10 year anniversary gift to ourselves, but, um, realizing how, how memories are made in, in places like that. So we're excited to make memories, but then also bless others and be able to let them make oh, memories too. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah you've inspired me actually. Um, yeah, I've, I've now got a Zillow thing on like for Captain, so I yes. want to buy one too. So. Okay. Well, Yay! you let me know and you can yeah. come stay anytime. And likewise, okay. if I get one, you're welcome. Okay, anytime. great. Good. Okay. We're Kevin, we're Kevin besties now. This is working out really well. See, this is how relationships are built. I love it. Okay. So what's something right now that has not been fun for you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, what has not been fun? You know, I completely, I've got recency bias for this question, but um, I completely understand what you're saying. Like you haven't missed travel and I have not missed travel, but what, what travel did give me, and I'm not talking about going to Europe for summer, like I'm talking about the work travel. It gave me a little bit of um, just a break from the intensity of my life at home and in the business, right? So people say to me like, what do you do for fun? It's like, I go to New York on a work trip and I get to have two nights in a hotel bed by myself like that is actually yeah. fun for me, right so oh I get it so yeah so <laughs> so what is fun is also not fun right the 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 thing of just um getting a little bit of me time I, you know and I I definitely when the world returns to normal I I want to get back to travel but I will do it even more discerningly like I will say no even more and yeah. um just try and remember to be really grateful and enjoy every second of it yeah oh yeah. I I can understand that I I really it's um just those little things that are a reprieve from the chaos of business and life. And mm -hmm. I can really, I can really feel that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's go with two more. I have so, I, I love these. These are sometimes the most fun questions to yeah. dive in on because it just, it just gives us a chance to really get to know someone. So um, what's something you wish more people asked you about? You're on a lot of interviews right now, but what's a question you wish you got asked? Oh, okay, great. Um, I am, I'm an open book and happy to talk about any single subject under the sun. I think one of the ones I'm most passionate about, and particularly for women, and given that your audience is women, um, is this, this idea about being um, unashamedly ambitious when it comes to building wealth and having financial independence and not having yeah. to shroud all of that with shame and guilt and just being able to say, I want to be, you know, what insert xyz word you know wealthy rich just financially independent whatever it means right but i love talking about money and i really want to help be part of that conversation to lift the shame around money yeah. and um you know like i've started investing in the stock market this year and i've done really really well from it and it's something that i didn't know i could do and i tried it and i you know i had all these self-limiting beliefs about doing that and then i started and i did it um and i'm doing really well from it i'm um i've been angel investing for several years now and i really love doing that but i just think there's so much um I don't know, there's so much joy to be had in inspiring others and yeah. inspiring other women to know that it's okay to want to do well and to be successful and, and your ambition should be, we should celebrate that, you know? Yes. So yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's something I want to talk more about. Definitely. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do podcast Another one, number two. two. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that, that has also, that's been a really big um, topic theme even just for my own growth and expansion this year, you know, investing in the property, investing in um, our friend's company, uh, yeah. Lori's company, and understanding just how money works, not not using the excuse that, oh, I don't understand it, or maybe that's not for me. So, okay, we could jam on that yeah, on another whole podcast. Okay. I would love, love it, that. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, yeah. last one. Where What's an area right now, or you could even just pick today. What's yeah. something right now that you're winging it? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. My gosh. Okay. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Turkey. Ah! Oh my. See, you've got to understand, like we, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving in Australia. It's not, not, um, obviously not Australian holiday. So I have actually been away for Thanksgiving, but the, we've lived in America for five years. I'm embarrassed and ashamed to say I've been away for four of those five. This is my first Thanksgiving on the ground with my family. Wow. And I'm going to be winging the turkey tomorrow. I can't wait to see yeah. how it turns out. <laughs> oh, I'm oh sure I'm <laughs> you know what there's always pizza delivery I, I actually oh, was talking we're 
we're going to a friend's house. I think with a lot of our Thanksgiving plans changing, a lot of people will be winging the turkey. And this is our, people will hear this after Thanksgiving, but just so you know, it's perfectly okay to order a pizza yeah, if it doesn't it turn out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Use that. Remember that for Thanksgiving next year. Yeah. I mean, it's funny. We, we were going to have, um, like quite a few more people over, but, um, you know, everyone's pulled out, which is great and fine. Um, but we are a party unto ourselves. There's six kids, two adults. So <laughs> it's an inbuilt party. <laughs> Oh, well, it's going to be beautiful. And, you know, that's t- sometimes where the best memories are made when things don't totally. turn out exactly yeah, totally. as planned. 100%, 100%. So as we start to wrap this up, I mean, of course, we're going to link everything in the show notes where people can find business chicks, the events, the online education, and then um, tell people where they can find the book. If there's somewhere that it benefits you more for them to buy it through that channel, if, if there's anywhere in particular, you would love for people to buy it. Oh, bless you. That's beautiful. No, um, obviously indie bookstores are amazing, but it's also available on Target, Walmart, Amazon. But yeah, I would just be so grateful if you pick up a copy and yeah, I appreciate that opportunity. Thanks, Lindsay. Oh, and it's something right now we're in a season, um, we, we call it the girl gang gift guide, where we promote all of our favorite women owned businesses for holidays and books are one of my favorite things to gift. And if you're looking for something to gift your girlfriends, especially those that I think this would be a beautiful gift for for that girlfriend who, you know, has a big idea on her heart. And it's like that way you give her this book and an encouraging note to go for it. That Mm -hmm. is a gift that could literally leave a ripple effect that you can't even imagine. So I know I'll be gifting it to girlfriends. And then here's what I want to do as well. Um, because I've just loved this chat so much. So take a screenshot, um, of, this podcast, or I love when people share where they're listening to it and show like them out on a walk with their dog or whatever that looks like, share your takeaway tag, Emma and myself, and then we'll pick three people and we'll send you a copy of the book, um, just for sharing and listening and supporting. But seriously, it's one of my favorite reads of 2020 thus far. And I've had a lot of time to do a lot of reading. (laughs) So it's truly just such a brilliant book. And I'm so grateful to you for writing it, but also just for the time spent here. So thank you so, so much. I loved it. You're a gem. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Oh, likewise. (laughs)